Welcome back to Concepts of Biology. We'll continue to read Chapter 6, Reproduction at the Cellular Level. Figure 6.1 A sea urchin begins life as a single cell that divides to form two cells visible by scanning electron microscopy. After four rounds of cell division, there are 16 cells, as seen in this scanning electron microscopy image. After many rounds of cell division, the individual develops into a complex multicellular organism, as seen in this mature sea urchin. Chapter Outline Section 6.1 The Genome Section 6.2 The Cell Cycle Section 6.3 Cancer and the Cell Cycle And Section 6.4 Prokaryotic Cell Division Introduction The individual sexually reproducing organism, including humans, begins life as a fertilized egg or zygote. Trillions of cell divisions subsequently occur in a controlled manner to produce a complex multicellular human. In other words, that original single cell was the ancestor of every other cell in the body. Once a human individual is fully grown, cell reproduction is still necessary to repair or regenerate tissues. For example, new blood and skin cells are constantly being produced. All multicellular organisms use cell division for growth and, in most cases, the maintenance and repair of cells and tissues. Single-celled organisms use cell division as their method of reproduction. Section 6.1 The Genome By the end of this video, you will be able to describe the prokaryotic and eukaryotic genome, and distinguish between chromosomes, genes, and traits. The continuity of life from one cell to another has its foundation in the reproduction of cells by the way of the cell cycle. The cell cycle is an orderly sequence of events in the life of a cell from the division of a single parent cell to produce two new daughter cells to the subsequent division of those daughter cells. The mechanisms involved in the cell cycle are highly conserved across eukaryotes. Organisms as diverse as protists, plants, and animals employ similar steps. Genomic DNA Before discussing the steps a cell undertakes to replicate, a deeper understanding of the structure and function of a cell's genetic information is necessary. A cell's complete complement of DNA is called its genome. In prokaryotes, the genome is composed of a single double-stranded DNA molecule in the form of a loop or circle. The region in the cell containing this genetic material is called a nucleoid. Some prokaryotes also have smaller loops of DNA called plasmids that are not essential for normal growth. In eukaryotes, the genome comprises several double-stranded linear DNA molecules bound with proteins to form complexes called chromosomes. Each species of eukaryote has a characteristic number of chromosomes in the nuclei of its cells. Human body cells, or somatic cells, have 46 chromosomes. A somatic cell contains two matched sets of chromosomes, a configuration known as diploid. The letter N is used to represent a single set of chromosomes. Therefore, a diploid organism is designated 2N. Human cells that contain one set of 23 chromosomes are called gametes or sex cells. These eggs and sperm are designated N or haploid. Figure 6.2. There are 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes in a female human somatic cell. 
These chromosomes are viewed within the nucleus on top, removed from a cell in mitosis to the right, and arranged according to length in the left, in an arrangement called a karyotype. In this image, the chromosomes are exposed to fluorescent stains to distinguish them. The matched pairs of chromosomes in a diploid organism are called homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are the same length and have specific nucleotide segments called genes in exactly the same location or locus. Genes, the functional units of chromosomes, determine specific characteristics by coding for specific proteins. Traits are the different forms of a characteristic. For example, the shape of air lobes is a characteristic with traits of free or attached. Hi, if you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share the link. We want these free textbook resources to be available to other students. All right, let's get back to reading. Each copy of the homologous pair of chromosomes originates from a different parent. Therefore, the copies of each of the genes themselves may not be identical. The variation of individuals within a species is caused by the specific combination of the genes inherited from both parents. For example, there are three possible gene sequences on the human chromosome that codes for blood type, sequence A, sequence B, and sequence O. Because all diploid human cells have two copies of the chromosome that determines blood type, the blood type or the trait is determined by which two versions of the marker gene are inherited. It is possible to have two copies of the same gene sequence, one on each homologous chromosome, for example, AA, BB, or OO, or two different sequences, such as AB. Minor variations in traits, such as those for blood type, eye color, and height, contribute to the natural variation found within a species. The sex chromosomes, X and Y, are the single exception to the rule of homologous chromosomes. Other than a small amount of homology that is necessary to reliably produce gametes, the genes found on the X and Y chromosomes are not the same. This ends Chapter 6, Section 6.1, The Genome. In our next video, we'll read section 6.2, The Cell Cycle.